Onyx, stand back a little. It's a good thing that stop sign's there holding it up. Heads up. Are the brakes on? That's why we stand back. Onyx, come stand over here farther. I'm not too worried about one tire right now. So the one on the far side's pulling now. You can see this end is loose. Oh man. to go. I'll go start the combines. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're good. That was fun. Did you guys see that? Yep. <laughs> is this an OSHA meeting? Yes, it is. Your oh, it's a good. safety meeting actually for drivers. I'm here. <laughs> yeah, that's the deal. You're not supposed to be able to stick your finger through the radiator hoses. No, I don't believe so. No. Uh, they breathe better that way. You mean you just put antifreeze in it, patch it, or get it down to Mexels or? We need to switch hoses first. Uh, we're gonna get this truck down to the shop, but dogs almost killed me. First, I wanna open this video with exactly what happened here last night. And I wanna say that the corner the driver was making is well more than a 90 degree corner. It's a very, very difficult corner. And the reason he was making it was because there's two ways home from that field and there was a tractor coming across the road. So he was getting out of that guy's way because one of the neighbors, I don't even know who it was, was coming with an implement behind him. He made a difficult right-hand turn to get out of his way. It was a respectful thing to do, and he did not make it correctly, obviously. Um, and I will say also, the driver, who I'm not going to name, because this is a little more serious than getting a tractor stuck in the mud or getting hung up a little bit on a field approach. The driver is not somebody that you see frequently in my videos, but you've seen him. We're just gonna fill it with straight water and throw some duct tape over it 
because we don't have to go very far. It's just a few miles down the road and hopefully that'll hold. We'll leave the, leave the radiator cap a little loose so it won't pressurize so much. I know a few guys are gonna say, why don't you just replace the chunk of hose? Because we don't have one and it's only a five mile drive down to the shop and we need the truck in the shop. It's gotta be inspected as twisted as it was. So we're not gonna replace that hose at the moment. How far was that then? 80 miles. <laughs> and it worked all the way. And it worked fine? Yeah. Well, we're not going that far. Not going to Rapid City. We got it running, and it seems like with the radiator cap loose, everything is staying in, it's staying dry, but there's definitely little tweaks and pieces of damage. The, uh, the running gear, the landing gear here is definitely kinked up. There's some spots on the trailer. I don't know, it, 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 there's definitely cosmetic spots you can see, but we're gonna take it to the shop and have them inspect it, because they're gonna know a lot better what they're looking at and let us know if this thing is okay or if we really gotta dig into it or if we don't. Anna, hey, you didn't wanna go with? Me neither. All right, well, those guys bring the truck to the shop. I gotta get the field cultivator off the 9570 here. And the plan is to put on the 33 foot Mendeco Storm so that we can go fast and chop the corn stalks up. We had this thing on for soybean tillage. I think there might be a storm brewing. I could have been a farmer, but no, I'm an actor. That one's good. Tires are good. Well, mainframe tires anyway. Hello. Well, I kind of think we're gonna have a truck back tomorrow. They took a quick look and weren't too concerned? The frame is twisted on the truck. Okay. They don't know on the trailer. Okay. You can see, you kind of measured it, they know what to look for. But there's a bunch of other things that can catch up. <laughs> so we can get it running? Well, I think we can get it running. The tarp won't work. We didn't really have time to fix that. Okay. But we can leave the tarp open. We got it open now. Right. One of the nice things about these Mendecos is they find treasures in your fields that can give you flat tires. We have two multi sections or whatever they are stuck around the disc blades. There you go. I wonder if we can return this. I would it's think, like right? We'll get the other side together. and weld them together. Oh, that is? Where do you suppose that is from? Yeah. The Mendeco storm is ready to go, other than going out to the field and setting it. We got a truck that dumped here. We're gonna get the dryer loaded up with corn and get that started before I go set the Mendeco. I just realized I bumped a button on my camera and my steady shot was off, so I'm sorry about the shakiness, guys. It'll get better here. Still half full. That's good. Let's get some tillage done. There are a couple reasons why we run, want to run this tillage piece right now. Number one, because we have some really, really long stalks we need to chop up here. Like all of these right here that we were unable to pick up and chop up with the combine header, we have to get these chewed up or we're going to have a big problem in the spring. Sure makes it a lot easier to see all the cobs we missed. That's depressing. The other reason is because it's fast. It's a lot faster than our ripper. It's 33 feet wide instead of 18. We can drive. As fast as we want to, we can't really pull it 10 miles an hour, but we're gonna drive seven or eight miles an hour instead of five and a half or six. I am going to pull a little angle out of the mulcher here. If I can get this pin out, there we go. Because it's bunching up a little, 
and it's leaving clumps which are also going to be a problem in the spring so we'll take some angle out of this to allow the residue to flow through a little faster. You come out here to check out the work? What do you think? And lastly the depth. How deep do we need it here? Oh I like that a little better. I added a little bit of angle to the gangs, front and rear, tilted the mulcher back, went about an inch deeper, and I can see the improvements. I would say that field looks nice. This thing should be good to go. Five to four. I got this 10 acres done at home here. I think the Mendeco's working pretty good. Some of the tougher spots, it works better to go over it twice at opposite angles, but it's, it looks pretty good. Okay, that's all good. How much? That's plenty dry. Let's go do some combining. Now this corn here is by far our worst field. This stuff is flat. We are combining one direction, going straight into it as best we can. Yeah, it, uh, it never really popped back up. It just kind of stayed where it fell. This one has that issue. She'll go. She'll go. Never doubted it. This is not how corn is supposed to be harvested. And back to the other end we drive. That, that idler gear right here? Oh, 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 yes. Yeah, she's a little warm. Yeah, the bearing is gone. Yeah. Um, it's still running for the moment. Oh, yeah, look at it. Oh, that. I don't think the that's. The chain is still tight. The chain is still tight, yeah. yeah. This must be a stud that's welded onto here. I think they both are, Zach. You take this off and get the chain off and then that comes right off. I'll call the service guy right now so that we've at least got one waiting for us. Yeah, because that'll start wearing into it. We'll, we'll wreck more, yeah. yeah. The good news here is that we're actually getting the vast majority of the stuff picked up, like 80 to 90 percent maybe. I mean, it, it looks pretty good and the yield is actually not that terrible. Right now the yield here is showing 124 for an average. I have only taken out five acres, but that's not that bad. I've decided to at least take a better look at that gear, that pulley underneath here and see what we're working with just so that it doesn't wear out too far and wreck the bolt and wreck a bunch more other things. At least see, see how bad it is or not. Well, I guess the tools that I keep in my truck are not as big as I thought they were. I'm going to need like a 15 sixteenths or a one inch or a metric, I'm sure, whatever size it is. And I don't have that. I don't know if the camera picks it up or not, but we got raindrops on the windshield. So that's, at least there's that. That was sarcasm. I was being sarcastic. I didn't, I'm not actually happy about that. If you've watched the last few years videos, you know what happens with the rain is that the sieves in the back that separate the chaff and the cob material from the kernels, what we want here, they will start to plug up with the silks or the chaff, the other material that we're pulling in, and then we'll start throwing all these kernels out the back too because they'll plug tight. So it's a, it doesn't work for very long if the plants themselves 
start to get wet, but we're not there yet. Oh, look at that. Just wait 15 minutes or so and the sun comes out. Stocks are dry again. We're good to go. Whole handful. Whole handful of tools. You forgot a crescent wrench. That's the most important one. 24? Yep. Oh, she's tight. I'm gonna take this uh, leverage wrench here. Oh, she's no. still pretty tight. You gotta be kidding. What about a torch? Did you bring a torch? <laughs> there she comes. You moved. There. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. Put it on this storage, storage space. Yep. Pry bar? Okay, there you go. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Broke it. We're done now, huh? I suppose it's pinched in there funny or maybe. Well, it's gotta be. She's toast. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, there's uh there's pieces of bearing floating around in there. Yeah. Ah yeah. Seems like our bearing in here, well the majority of it disappeared, some of it just relocated. See, we, want, we want it to go, this is attached directly to here. This to go back. that way. So yeah, you gotta screw that out. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Yeah, that's the... Yeah, that's it should just be the bolt on this arm that's left then. Yeah. We got a three quarters out and it's broke, so I'll take this truck sitting here and Jim can take my pickup to deer. Another part off. It's broke exactly like we thought it might be, so I'm going to take the full truck home, check the dryer, the moisture on that, make sure it's running the right speed, and Jim is going to actually take my pickup over to Midwest Machinery, get our parts we need. Dad's going to keep combining slowly. But surely. Nineteen point seven percent. In West Central Minnesota, we will take that because it's not going to dry out any more than that. At this point, we're out of nice weather, and we need to get it out before we get any snow. The ground freezes. We got to get our tillage done. We'll take it out. We'll dry it. Moisture in the corn coming out of the back of the dryer is perfect, but I am going to shut the unload off here for a minute and actually go switch bins so that we're going into a different one. Well, that spill, that little spill there, we don't worry about that little spill. Let's get us a ratcheting 24 here. And you leave the field for 30 minutes and you'd swear they got half of it done. It's a good feeling seeing that they, they got a bunch done while I was gone. It's kind of like when you get up to go to the restroom and then you come back at the restaurant and your food's there waiting for you. Like, that's awesome. You just get lucky. Was that a good analogy? Made sense to me. Okay, it's all ready to go, buddy. Look, you got the sprocket under already? And four. Yep, it only gets that. better. Okay. Jim finished fixing yeah, the head for me. Uh, <laughs> I, the up by the I should just spot. leave again. Unreal. We'll take a look at it quick before I go get him. Apparently they really did have that part waiting for you, huh? Yes, they did. They had it right uh, there. Uh, I even brought you the 24 with the ratcheting end. Too <laughs> late, buddy. <laughs> Ooh, it's shiny. Yeah. Whew back in my safe space. It's just so bad. Well, there goes the much newer combine that I need to make a payment on this fall that he gets to drive all year. I've had some people asking why I'm in this combine and he's in that one and what, whatever. The, the deal is, honestly, it's just the way it worked out when the main headers were here. We had our header on that one. He took off and went while I worked with the honeybee header guy, Jason, with this machine. And I've just kind of stayed in this machine. It's just the way it's worked out. Plus, 
he's got everything figured out on that one, got the settings the way he likes them, and honestly, he says there's more room for his knee that he just had surgery on in August, so whatever, we're getting stuff done. I, I, I'm really not that fussy. This is overall going as good as we could possibly hope for it to, which is not good. Here I'm in the back part of the field. You can see it's standing much, much better back here. But I've had a problem with this. I don't know why every time I go through the draw, I've turned up the header sensitivity to try to get it to adjust on the header height control, but I might just have to turn it off there. Like I might need two hands for this. We have got a full grain cart here. Jim went home a long time ago. We've got a truck sitting over there that's just about full. Dad is finishing up the last cut across the field for him that's gonna fill that truck. I'm gonna tarp this cart. Get out of here. Not a, not a bad day. This cart has a tarp, but it doesn't have the power electric tarp like the last one had because of COVID. I didn't want to say it, but I had to say it. So hung up on the cart. I filled it too full. Luckily, they've got the handy dandy ladder here. It pulls right out and locks in and I'll see if I can fix this situation that I caused. Don't try this at home, kids. Now, how do I monkey back onto that ladder? If I fall, listen for the thud, okay? Should make good content. I could have been a gymnast. 